Hi, I'm Ginny Smith. Welcome to the Cosmic Shambles Network. In this series of videos, we're at Nova Space for the 72nd ESA Parabolic Flight Campaign. You'll find links to the other videos in the description below, but in this episode, I'll be looking at some of the other experiments that have been going up in the plane to try be tried out in zero G. Carlo, what is it that you're working on? So we are working about the wound healing and tissue engineering in space. Um, actually, we should say that for the moment, maybe is not one of the most important problem that should be tackled for space exploration, but uh, we have the vision that when uh, we will have bases on the moon for long space exploration, so health-related problem will become more and more important. So what is it that you're actually taking up or your team is taking up in the plane? So uh, we are testing essentially the conformability and the stretchability of some materials that will be used to heal, so with some seeding with some cells, to heal the tissue that uh, have been injured and at the same time to check for their resistance under the uh, unloading or loading conditions. So we will exploit basically not only the microgravity uh, period but also the hypergravity period. So these would be effectively plasters, like you'd put over a wound, but they've exactly. got cells on them to help your skin heal? Yeah, for the moment we are using uh, fibroblast, essentially for some reason of biosafety uh, on board the plane. Uh, we can say that in the, uh, in the final configuration of the apparatus that we are uh, thinking about, we will be using instead of fibroblast stem cells okay. that are more uh, uh, prone to be uh, used for healing tissues. And do you know that using those kind of cells, will that make wounds heal faster? Uh, on ground, we know that has been proven already by okay. some experiments. For example, just to give you an order of magnitude, uh, some of uh, the burnings uh, that uh, usually with the normal uh, dressings were healing in uh, maybe one month. Uh, with stem cells and this kind of patches that we are testing has been reduced to maybe 10 days. So oh, it's wow. a quite a strong reduction. And we hope that the same will be uh, also in space. And this, of course, will be a good assets for long space exploration. What do you think might happen differently if you change the gravity compared to when wounds heal on Earth? I think that basically will be the distribution of these fluids uh, that uh, the, uh, our body uh, create in order to protect the open flesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this distribution, of course, will influence the healing process. And so we have to understand which, is the di which are the differences between the ground and space so that we can optimize the healing process for space application. And is this something that will only apply in space to the very few people who are up there? Or would it be, could it be rolled out to other areas here on Earth? Actually, it's, uh, it will be even more important on Earth. Now, I, I don't want to be long about the economic consequences, mm -hmm. but consider that uh, these are official statistics from the WHO. And so the healthcare system are, the, I mean, are expensive essentially for, because of the contribution of rural community. So consider that uh, uh, in proportion, the healthcare are more expensive if you have to uh, bring a new hospital in a rural community instead of having a hospital in big cities. Mm -hmm. So you can tell me which is the relation to it, but of course if you can give predictive tools to rural community, they can go the, the, to the hospital only when it's uh, strictly needed okay. and on this we will reduce a lot the costs and uh, both the service for uh, the community that are not in the main center. You know, in United States uh, often uh, the community are quite sparse in a broad land and so the nearest hospital is 200 kilometers away so it means that patients should move each time and the hospital are overcrowded uh, each time and so they should check. On the other way around, giving them tools and prediction, they can just connect via smartphone, communicate to the central hospital that will tell them, no, don't worry, the healing is, going, is go doing good, uh, don't worry, and only when it's needed, they should move. Fascinating. Thank you so much for talking to me, Carlo, Thank and good luck you. with the project. Thank you for inviting me. 
You may have seen a documentary I made a couple of years ago with Cosmic Shambles and Conway Hall all about some really high-tech 3D printing technology here on Earth. Well, now I'm going to find out a bit about how similar technologies might be able to be used in the future in space. This is uh, for future, far future space exploration. Mm. For example, if people are going to stay in a spacecraft for longer times or inhabit foreign planets like Moon or Mars, um, the 3D printing is a quite um, benefiting technology to, to uh, be able to only produce the things you actually need in that particular moment and not take a lot of spare parts uh, because uh, payload is very crucial on, on spacecraft, etc. So uh, being able to print on demand what you need mm -hmm. in this moment is, is in itself a really um, nice thing. And what are the challenges when it comes to printing with different types of gravity? The challenge that we face, because we have a powder-based process okay. um, that, in itself, that in itself has uh, various materials that can be used and potential to be very precise when you use a laser. And um, in, uh, on Earth gravity, um, the principle or the process works really good and is established and everything. But uh, as soon as you go to different gravity levels or even microgravity, the process cannot be just adapted or used because you have to powder. It's usually it's a powder bed on Earth. But the problem in space is that your powder would just float around before exactly. you have a chance to yeah. melt it. Exactly, and that's why we have a closed containment mm. where the powder is inside. And why did you decide to look at um, 3D printing using powder layers? Because there are lots of other ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. You can sort of extrude yeah. and almost pipe like icing a cake, mm -hmm. can't you? Or there's, there's a method that I've seen that involves a a tub of liquid and then some lasers and then a thing mm -hmm. kind of appears. Why yep. did you go for powder rather than one of these other methods? Mm, powder has a lot of benefits like for, regarding the material. Like okay. You can use a lot of different materials in powder. It, it can be metals, it can be sand. Or, so and having the variety of, of using different kinds of materials is, is, an, is a very good thing. And mm -hmm. if you think about, again, on the beginning, potentially going to the Mars, to Moon, there is a sand in abundance or a regolith ah. in abundance on these planets that is actually a resource that is waiting to be used. So you could actually print things out of Mars? That, that is a bit of the idea wow. that you actually have the resource there and you just take the powder or the, the, the sand you find on the planet surface, put it in the printer and then you can make, I don't know, uh, bricks for your house. Wow. Or this, this is <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so does it work with effectively anything that can be melted with, with heat? No, basically. But in this closed containment, the procedure is rather the, the same. Like you, in every layer, you have to deposit a new powder layer, mm. and that has to be then sintered on the spots where you want a solid object afterwards. Basically. And you do that, and then you add more and close it again, or is it all in there from the exactly. beginning? Exactly, that's that's a bit of the, the challenges we face okay. when you have a closed containment and the same procedures mm. as on Earth. That basically every powder that we use is in that box now, and now. If you have the box, you kind of have to deposit a new layer inside the box, and this is kind of the difficult thing. So how, yeah, how do you get the lasers to go to the right spot if it's mm -hmm. all full of powder? And, and basically, we have two concentric cylinders, mm. and um, the inner and on the bottom is a glass plate, through which f we don't have a laser yet. We're just okay. going to use an infrared lamp, but okay. it does the same job basically for the moment. And uh, so through that glass plate at the bottom, the infrared lamp is mm. able to insert the energy and the heat that it actually melts. And um, the inner tube is the, the surface where we're going to print on. Okay. And everything happens upside down, so the inner tube moves up. Uh -huh. So on this bottom surface, it's going to be like layer by layer added. Okay. And when the inner tube moves up, the powder from the side has to flow under this one. Ah. And uh, that's... That's basically what's going to happen. Okay, and this is the new bit that you're and testing. And this is basically this the works. new bit that Olfa Lopez, the team leader, she she thought about this principle and this idea of that we have closed containment and mm. the inner tube basically is going to be up, upside down on the inner tube that is going to rise up is is where the powder flows underneath mm. and basically if if it's flown underneath and basically forms a new nice homogeneous layer, then we can actually sinter it. And was yesterday the first time testing this in microgravity? But actually, with powder, with a lamp, it's really the first time we were sintering in microgravity. Yes. The two flyers did really good. 
and uh, and we managed to print completely two samples, uh, each from one different type of powder. So I was asked if I could uh, pass the samples around, and that's completely out of question. <laughs> <laughs> but I can show you pictures if you want. So you have to imagine that maybe it doesn't look like Eiffel Towers on the moon yet, but it's a, it's a first print, and we are really happy about it. And it's, it's also really exciting that we get yeah, it's a big white thing. <laughs> it's a hockey puck. <laughs> I heard in the debrief yesterday you mentioned something about it being a bit porous. Yes. So what, what does that mean? Why would that have happened? Um, basically, when, when the, this inner tube is moving up, giving mm. a free space where the powder is going to flow underneath, uh, it's very important for this object that's later going to be sintered from this powder that the it's very homogeneous and evenly distributed. The powder, the powder in this free space. Ah. And, uh, so you have got like some gaps exactly. in the powder. If, so if we talk about an, a porous sinter mm. or a porous uh, object later on, that means basically that the powder as we sintered it was not perfectly homogeneous. Okay. And there were some little gaps in between. And if you melt it and it's going to cool down, in these porous will stay there. Um, one of the yeah. goals that process was designed with was also to be inde independent of the flow of gravity. Because um, there are already some, or there was a, 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 an experiment that was also printing with powder on uh, microgravity. Okay. But they had really specific uh, uh, requirements for the powder. Like it would, it would have to be perfectly evenly spaced, uh, mm. sized spheres and perfectly flow or even if a, with a binder in between that the powder flows really nice. Mm -hmm. So that was something that Olfa Lopez wanted to get over and design a process that doesn't need really specific Bit more robust. Could but more robust and really just put everything inside <laughs> and it sh should work. Interesting. That's the idea. Um, in general, <laughs> um, this is really designed to be independent of gravity and have that benefit of uh, being able to do it in space or on a other planet or something like that. Fantastic. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, we've made lots more. Check out the links in the description and you can also subscribe to our channel. Thank you to Isa and Novasfes for inviting us to take part in this parabolic campaign. And thanks also to our Patreons. Without your support, we couldn't make videos like this. So do check out the link and go to our Patreon page if you're thinking about subscribing and helping support us to make more videos. See you next time.